Okay, so once you've covered a variety of statistical tests, you've in a way built your statistical toolbox. We have all of these different tools that we can use, but not every tool is appropriate for every situation. So one of the biggest challenges in statistics is identifying what tool to use in a given situation. And this is really something that develops a lot with experience. However, there are some guiding questions or principles that you can use to, to help you identify more easily what, and in this case specifically, what inferential statistical tool do I need to use to try to address this problem? So I have this flowchart <laughs> that I is, is represents sort of how my brain works to process this information. So this one's a little complex. It has some tests that we didn't end up going over in our class, but I think it's important to have them represented here um, for future reference. Okay. So for example, we didn't go over a two-way chi-squared test of independence. We only reviewed a one-way chi-squared goodness of fit test. Um, however, at least you can see there is the possibility there is an additional more sophisticated or advanced um, version there. Additionally, I have listed a repeated measures ANOVA, which we talked about briefly in class, but we did not um, go into in depth. So first, you really want to think about your variables and how your variables are scaled. And this is really where it becomes important whether we're talking about categorical or continuous variables, because that often is what's guiding your analysis. So how are your variables scaled? We began this class by um, first talking about descriptive statistics, where we just want to describe our sample. We talked about shape, center, and spread. So for a particular variable, we may look at the shape as a histogram, uh, evaluate the center by looking at the mean or the median, and evaluate the spread by looking at, for example, the standard deviation. Now, once we've identified our variables and, and looked at them <laughs> and assessed each one, um, it's important to identify then when we're doing an analysis that involves multiple variables, right? Inferential statistics, looking at how these variables are connected in some way. Um, then we wanna identify how are they scaled. So we began by looking at cases where we had two continuous variables, where we have a independent variable that's scaled continuously on a range of numbers and a dependent variable that's scaled on a continuous range of numbers. In those cases, for example, if we are uh, referring back to the pizza price example, we wanted to identify whether there was a relationship between the number of toppings on a pizza and the price of the pizza. Both of those variables, number of toppings and price, are a range of numbers. They're a, a continuously scaled variable. So in that case, we would want to determine, well, do we want an equation that allows us to predict our outcome, our dependent variable? If so, then we'll use a linear regression analysis. And if we are not looking to predict, if we simply want to determine the strength and direction of the relationship, then we would look at a correlation analysis. And generally that would be Pearson's correlation coefficient. We then moved on to considering cases where 
we wanted to look for differences in a variable, a scaled continuous variable between groups. So in that case, we have a continuous dependent variable and a categorical independent variable representing the groups that we're talking about. So we would want to know, is there a difference in this variable, our dependent variable, between the levels of our independent variable? Now, in further guiding us in determining what analysis to use, we would want to ask, well, how many groups or samples do we have? If we have just sampled one group one time, then we're going to run a one sample t-test. If we have two groups or samples that we're comparing, we want to ask the question, are those groups related in some way? For example, are we sampling the same group of people twice? Or are those samples connected in some way? For example, mothers and children or um, spouses? Or are they not connected or related in any way? For example, a study where people have been randomly assigned to two different groups. So if those groups are related or connected, we'll use a paired samples t-test. If they're not related or connected, we'll use an independent samples t-test. If we have the case where we want to compare more than two groups, then we're going to be using an ANOVA, an analysis of variance. If those groups are not related or connected, we use a one-way ANOVA, which we went over in depth in this class. If those groups are related or connected, then we would use a repeated measures ANOVA. Finally, we wrapped up with talking about a scenario where we wanted to compare whether expected counts, sorry, whether observed counts, counts that we see in a variable, right? If we're looking at some variable that has different categories, it's a categorical variable. And we wanna know whether the observed data that we see is consistent with what we would expect with the null hypothesis then we use the one-way chi-squared goodness of fit test. So in that scenario, we wanna know whether expected counts in different categories are consistent with the counts that we actually see. There's also a scenario where we can look at two variables, where we can see whether the counts in two categorical variables are independent of each other or if they're not independent of each other. So this is another way, this is, it's very similar in some ways just to asking whether those two variables are related. But in this case, we're talking about two categorical variables, not two continuous variables. Right? So we would use a two-way chi-squared test of independence to determine whether two categorical relate variables are related to each other in some way or whether they are independent of each other. Now I have this written out um, in a slightly different way in our classwork. So choosing the right statistical test. First identify your variables and any groups that you have. Ask yourself, Am I comparing a variable between groups? If not, then you're generally looking for a relationship between variables. So if you are interested in identifying a relationship between variables and you want an equation allowing you to make those predictions of an outcome, that's the case where you'll be running a regression analysis. If you want to look at the relationship between variables, but you only want to know the strength and relationship of the, the variables of the relationship, then you're going to be looking at a correlation. Now, if you are comparing a variable between groups, then it matters how many groups. 
if we only have one group, compared to a given value or number, then we're running a one sample t-test. If we're comparing two groups, if those two groups are related or the same people, it's a paired samples t-test. And if they're not related in any way, it's an independent samples t-test. If you're comparing more than two groups, if those groups are related or the same people, it's a repeated measures ANOVA. If they're unrelated, then it's a one-way ANOVA. And we touched a little bit on the fact in class that um, there are actually additional more ANOVAs, versions of ANOVA that we can use. But as this is an introductory statistics class, um, this is as far as we're going to go with ANOVA, right? But you may, if you go on to an advanced statistics class, you are likely to learn about, for example, factorial ANOVA or possibly ANCOVA or MANOVA. Now, if you are simply interested in how many are in each group and whether those counts are consistent with some expected counts, then that's the scenario where we're going to use a chi-squared test. So I have here one, two, uh, eight different scenarios, research scenarios, and I'm going to have you read through each one and try to identify the correct statistical test to use for each scenario. Mm -hmm. Now again, one of the most challenging parts of conducting statistical analyses is determining which test to use, so these are definitely challenging. Don't be discouraged if you find this very difficult as it's a skill that comes with experience. So as you read through each one, really try to identify what are the variables that are being examined and what is being asked? Is it asking about a relationship between variables? If so, are you being asked to make predictions? Is it asking about differences between groups of people or different conditions? If so, what are those groups? How many are, they, are there and are they related to each other or not? And finally, are you just being asked about whether the number of people in certain categories um, meets certain requirements or not? Okay, so those are the questions that I think will help guide you in this exercise. Again, it is challenging, so um, do your best. There are no repeats here, so if you look at this list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there are eight possible answers, and each one gets used only once for these eight questions. Okay. So read through, and if you get stuck on one, go to the next one. Keep going until you find one. You're like, I know this one, and narrow it down from there. And then once you are done, um, compare, compare yours with the solution guide, and you'll notice in the solution guide I also have some additional comments um, explaining why each test is appropriate for that scenario. So good luck. Uh, enjoy exercising your brain.